Hello, my dudes. My name is Tiffany. Welcome back to my series, Internet Analysis. Today, I just want to have a little more of a casual convo. I want to talk about why YouTube is feeling so lackluster, so stale lately. Is it just me? I don't know. I don't think so. As a viewer and a creator, I have just been feeling very disconnected from YouTube lately. And out of all topics that I could discuss this week, I thought, Let's dive into that. First of all, of course, I considered titling this, is YouTube dying? Which I feel like is a question that is asked every year forever. And no, I do not think YouTube as a platform is dying. I have been on YouTube as a viewer and a creator since very close to YouTube's creation. And I'm well aware that we all have ups and downs on this platform. You know, your relationship with different social media platforms can change. But yeah, this is just one of those eras, one of these moments where Things are not feeling like they're at their prime. So in this video, I want to talk about what I have been watching lately on YouTube and how I've been feeling about that, the algorithm. Also going to get into like, is TikTok affecting how I'm feeling about YouTube? So let's get into it. My recent viewing habits. Typically, like for the last five years at least, YouTube is my biggest chunk of my screen time. It's where I spend the most of my time. It's where I get most of my entertainment. I have found that in the last few months, I'm just choosing YouTube less. When I pick up my phone to find some entertainment, I don't feel as driven to click on YouTube. Or when I do, I'm just like, meh. I've also found that a lot of what I am watching or choosing is like very light comfort kind of content. So even though I'm not watching a lot of videos throughout the day, I still do listen to YouTube videos before bed and as I'm falling asleep. So I'm the type of person, I hate hearing noises at night. Every single thing I hear, I'm like, oh, that's someone breaking in, that's something scary. I know it's irrational. I try to cope with that by literally covering up the noises. It just helps me fall asleep if I'm listening to something. Like I'd rather have a drone of a video or a podcast than silence. Can't do white noise either, it's not enough. So for nighttime, half asleep listens, I'm usually re-watching Jenny Nicholson or Sarah Zed videos. For similar reasons, they're both reliably very long, a good duration for me to probably fall asleep, and both of them have nice, you know, soothing voices. There's usually not any loud sound effects or anything that are gonna <laughs> pull me out of my sleep. So anyway, that's very atypical for me, you know? Usually I'm a go-to YouTube girly, usually I cannot get enough. I have been still adding a lot of things to my watch later, but then I don't watch them later. It's strange, what's happening? I will tell you what's happening. Something is getting in the way of me and my YouTube consumption, and that is TikTok, I know. Before we continue, let's give a shout out to today's sponsor, which is SeatGeek. In case you're unfamiliar, SeatGeek is a ticketing app and website that just makes it super easy to buy whatever tickets you need, whether that is for music, some concerts, some comedy, some sports, whatever you're into, SeatGeek collects tickets from all over the web and makes it easy to search them all in one place. For me personally, I had tickets to a lot of good shows that were canceled over the past few years, and now live events are coming back and I am very ready to see some of my faves in person. Fun fact, my first ever concert was to see Avril Lavigne, a legend. So looking at the SeatGeek app, I synced it with my Spotify and it immediately picked up all of my faves and showed me, hey, look who's touring soon. Um, The Shins, Remy Wolf, Muna, you're kidding me. Clearly I have plenty of great shows to choose from. And what I love about SeatGeek is that they will show you the ticket prices in different parts of the venue and let you know if it's actually a good deal. Is that price worth it? If it's a green dot, that means yes, that's a good deal. If it's red, that means no, not so good. You can do better. I think I'm gonna get these tickets for my birthday, my anniversary, Christmas next year's birthday. So next time you are buying tickets to any kind of show, check out SeatGeek. You can use my promo code Tiffany for $20 off your first purchase, and you can click the link in the description to download the app. Thank you, SeatGeek. TikTok. Okay, here's the thing. I was one of those people who resisted TikTok for a very long time. I actually only downloaded it and really started watching it regularly about six months ago like this year. I resisted TikTok through 2020, 2021 even. And that was because one, I love to be different. <laughs> I love it. And I was scared because I had heard that TikTok is obviously so addicting. And I was like, the last thing I need is another app to take all of my attention. So I tried to avoid it. Embarrassingly, I got to a point where I kept watching YouTube shorts, even though they're pretty terrible. We'll talk more about that later. And then I found myself watching a lot of Instagram reels and I got into like the Christian mommy side of reels and I was like, they're not serving me the right content. I don't like this. 
Uh, sorry, I just had a flashback. I recently went to get coffee and the barista asked what I did and I said I'm a YouTuber, which was mistake number one. And she said, oh, are you a mommy vlogger? It both ruined and made my day. It was hilarious, but painful. I did not have a child with me, but do I just give off mommy vlogger energy? Maybe. Anyway, I realized I was getting like months old trends and it's so repetitive. I was like, okay, clearly I'm craving the, the short form content. Let's try out the real thing. Since downloading TikTok, I've tried to approach it kind of like a social experiment, which is my excuse because it's really just mindless entertainment, obviously. It doesn't have to be that deep. But I do try to remain kind of self-aware in how it's affecting me, my mood, my attention span. That was something I was really concerned about. I used to walk around all day with my phone. I have YouTube Premium, highly recommend it if you can afford another subscription, purely because you can like close the app and just let things play out loud. So I'd walk around with my phone in hand, playing videos out loud all day long as I was getting ready or cleaning or eating. Anyway, it was easier to multitask because I didn't have to watch the videos, I could just listen. Whereas with TikTok, I have to stop what I'm doing. I have to hold the phone in my hand. I've got to actively watch the screen because there's text and all sorts of other things that you'll miss if you look away. And then you have to actively scroll through. So I find TikTok, not only of course, the algorithm is addicting, but the actual use of it is very physically captivating, which further traps me in the cycle. I've been watching some videos about other people's thoughts on like, is YouTube dying? And this is from a recent Drew Monson video. Yeah, okay, but in general, I don't know. I think that TikTok is clearly like more in line with how people's brains are forming now and what you need. Like YouTube, it just, it feels a little bit like a turtle compared to like the rabbit that TikTok is. Like it's just kind of what people are requiring to not lose their minds right now. So I completely get it. TikTok feels like a big party with like flashing lights and seizure warnings and like YouTube is kind of like okay let me I'm gonna sit down and read a book yes I just compared watching YouTube to reading a book but if TikTok is a movie did I just say movie Obviously much has been said about TikTok's algorithm and how scary it is in being so effective at captivating our attention, serving you up some very specific content. And I think it was Drew maybe in that same video or another one that said, TikTok is also so much easier to use because you don't have to click anything. Like with YouTube, you might have some decision fatigue because you have to actively decide which video to watch and click on it. Whereas with TikTok, things just get served up to you next. You do have to swipe, but you don't have to make a decision. It's already choosing for you. So if you're feeling down in any way, depressed, anxious, you want to escape as much as possible, TikTok is a lot easier to consume. It's a very passive process. So you might wonder, what am I watching on TikTok? Good question. <laughs> I have gone down the dog part of TikTok because we adopted a dog a few months ago and he has taken over our lives in the best way. I've become a stereotypical dog mom. Nathan and I send each other dog TikToks constantly. It's exhaustingly predictable. <laughs> Again, the individualist in me is like, oh my God, can't admit this on camera. As almost everyone, I've gone on to, do I have ADHD, TikTok? I certainly have some executive dysfunction, but we don't have to get into that. I also fall down other rabbit holes about internet culture, history, little fun facts. I constantly catch myself when I'm having conversations with other people. I feel like all I say is like, oh, I saw this TikTok about, oh, I learned this fun fact. Oh, I saw this TikTok that said, and I'm like, there's nothing in my brain except TikTok right now. That's kind of fucked. Obviously, YouTube and TikTok do have different types of content. They do fulfill different cravings. Like again, I do of course go to YouTube for my long form content. TikTok is better for escapism, for when I don't want to think. So overall, sometimes I'm like, you know what? TikTok is adding value to my life. I learned some fun things. I've found a lot of interesting creators. I've learned a lot from those creators, either from educational content or just their own experiences, which I think is valuable. But also TikTok is very bad for overstimulation and getting trapped in those like 45 minute hour long cycles minimum of just completely being sucked in. And I find that if you were to ask me after an hour of using TikTok, what did you just watch? Could you tell me a couple things? I like wouldn't be able to, but I realized even though consciously I can barely remember all those different threads, I do still have probably 50 threads swirling around in my brain, all these different ideas and things I wanna Google and things I wanna look into more 
things I'll forget instantly. And I just imagine them all getting tangled in my brain because there's no way that consuming that much content in a short amount of time doesn't confuse your brain. Or at least me, like, definitely, speaking for myself. I can feel it after I've used TikTok for too long. I feel this, like, hum of, like, yeah, I guess I'm overstimulated. I have too much in my brain that I can't detangle. I feel like I have, like, 45 tabs open, which I typically do in general, but, like, in my head. (laughs) So overall, I do think my YouTube habits, the things that I consume on YouTube, are probably overall better for me. Maybe I learn more. Maybe I retain more. Maybe it's not so overstimulating, but still TikTok is so deeply addictive that I can't stop. And it is the app that I want to open at the moment. So let's go back to that question of algorithms because I feel like YouTube's algorithm has been fucking terrible for a while now. In terms of what is being recommended to me, I have noticed, and this was also confirmed on my Instagram responses, YouTube keeps giving us videos we've already seen. And it is the most annoying thing. Like, I will have just watched a video today or yesterday and it'll get recommended to me again without any little red bar, no measure of progress, no no record of me watching it. And my viewing is not set to private. All my accounts are logged in. It doesn't make any sense. YouTube, hey, um, I watched that whole video. I've seen it all. You think I enjoyed it so much I want to watch it again? What is this? I assume this has to be a mistake or some sort of error in their algorithm because, of course, it's not effective in getting me to rewatch that video, so I just don't understand the purpose of why they're serving me up literally the content I've already seen. That's annoying. And also, it's not even just videos I've just recently watched. They'll show me videos from channels I've been watching for years, videos that I watched years ago when they came out, and they'll just be like, remember this old video? Want to watch it again? No. Or maybe I do. So that's very annoying. Obviously very repetitive and just makes me mad when I'm scrolling through my recommended. I literally just watched that, love. Vibes. Sorry, Love Island's back. Then I've noticed they also will recommend me a handful of certain videos that I haven't clicked on. And for like a week straight, they'll continue being like, watch this video. And I'm like, meh, maybe eventually. And they'll remember this video, wanna watch this? I'm like, give me something else. Aren't you supposed to serve me up different things? I haven't clicked that one for a reason. Try again. And my last main complaint is that YouTube hasn't really been recommending me to very many new channels. One thing I can specifically note is like, I've been tagged in some lists of like video essay or commentary channels like on Twitter. And so I'll look at those and I'll see a lot of people suggesting a lot of the same channels that I've never heard of before, which I find strange because this is my sphere of YouTube. Video essays and commentary is a lot, probably the majority of what I watch. So why is YouTube not giving me this kind of content? That's exactly what I'm into. And I'm like, not a peep from my algorithm. Nary a feature in my recommended. YouTube, you're dropping the ball. This is quite easy. (laughs) And then, you know, in general, YouTube typically is very bad at promoting smaller channels, which we know is an ongoing problem. But it's like, it's very weird which channels YouTube decides to show me. And then we've got to touch on YouTube's promotion of shorts. So obviously with TikTok on the rise, the most popular app right now, probably currently, YouTube's competitor, which is laughable, is shorts. You know, Instagram has reels. And of course, people are kind of just repurposing their same TikTok content onto those other platforms. Someone responded, I hate shorts clogging my feed. I wish they could be filtered out. And I absolutely agree because YouTube definitely wants creators to use shorts. It's a new feature. They're really trying to get people into it. I'm pretty sure they have some incentives to promote shorts or like if you post shorts, YouTube will try to pump them out and then it's supposed to help bring in a new audience to your channel. But as a viewer, I can say I hate seeing shorts pop up in my subscription box right next to regular videos. For a second, it tricks me and I think it's a brand new upload, but it's just a short and that's frustrating to me. I want to watch a whole video. And also just in terms of organization, when I go to someone's channel and I go to videos and it's like a bunch of shorts because I get it. I get why creators are doing it. Honestly, I should probably be doing it. It's a smart move in terms of doing what YouTube wants you to do, maybe getting that new audience. But anyway, looking at someone's channel, it bugs me. It feels disorganized and I hate it to see like, I'm trying to find their last video upload, but there's like 20 shorts in between. I feel like the least they could do is just put it in a different tab, put it in a different part of the subscription box. Am I wrong? Do they have this feature and I haven't even noticed? Okay, so they do have this tab on channels, which I appreciate greatly. So you can sort videos or shorts. 
but my subs box still puts them all together. It also looks bad because obviously shorts are vertical and YouTube videos are horizontal, so it just looks like it's the wrong size. They've got to reorganize this. YouTube, if you're listening, fix this, please. I might be more likely to watch a couple shorts if you at least make it look a little nicer, please. And so now I want to chat a little bit about video essays and commentary because most of what I do watch falls under this umbrella. It's the sort of content I make. There is no shortage of wonderful video essay content and actually... <laughs> based on the duration of most of these videos, you could spend a lot of time watching it. But lately I have found myself for really the first time avoiding video essays and especially heavier video topics. Though my peers are creating wonderful work as per usual, I just like, I don't think I have the brain capacity for it. I don't have the emotional capability to handle anything that's too dark or heavy or complicated. Like, I think my brain is just tired. I will also say another kind of problem I've been having is like with the commentary genre expanding, I think in the last few years, we've seen so many amazing new creators join this genre. Inevitably, people are covering some similar or like the same topics because naturally, if you're making videos involving pop culture at all or news, it's understandable. These are very timely, popular topics. It makes sense why people are covering them. And I think it's nice and it is important to hear multiple takes or multiple perspectives on the same issue. That is very valuable. Like I would happily listen to five creators cover the same topic over the course of like a year, but if they're all kind of posting that similar topic within the same week, it might just be a little bit much. Another thing that some people responded on my Instagram was that creators seem tired, a lot of their faves have quit or post very rarely now, and that YouTube just feels off. And I totally agree because, hey, I feel stale too. That's a big problem. Again, I feel like the only semi-interesting things that I have bopping around in my brain right now are things I've seen on TikTok. Oh, did you see that TikTok of this? I have nothing else to offer. That's what's taking up all of my spare time and attention. I have no original thoughts. Head empty. It's really tough to feel stale as a creator, especially in the video essay commentary sphere. Like we're always expected to have an opinion and have something really interesting to add to the conversation. But it's like, honestly, sometimes or a lot of the time, I do not have an interesting, unique, never before heard take. You know, once in a while inspiration strikes and I'm like, okay, this topic feels very me. Like, I feel like I can cover this really well. I have a really passionate take on it, but it's very hard to have that same energy or excitement, you know, week after week, or for me, maybe like once or twice a month looking at my posting schedule. So for comparison, I want to like, think about this, compare YouTube to a TV show, which of course, very different productions. YouTube videos are typically one person to small team productions, whereas TV shows are obviously massive. But imagine if a show you liked posted or premiered an episode every week, once a week, but had no seasons. So you would just get an episode every week forever for years. I think even with a show that I love, I would get tired of it eventually. You know, the excitement of seeing that show every week would start to die down because you would just have an endless stream of it every week. The structure of having seasons, I think, helps you miss a show that you love, you know? When the season ends, you're like, oh, I can't wait till next year to see more. That time off also gives the cast and crew time to recuperate, to actually think about what to do in the next season, to plan ahead, to try to make something interesting, to get inspired. And then also sometimes people talk about, you know, when a show kind of feels like it's gone on for a few too many seasons, it's been dragging, by then you're like, just end it already. There's no more to explore here. That's so natural. And the thing is that YouTube feels like that sometimes definitely to me as a creator. And I notice it sometimes as a viewer where I'm like, okay, I've seen enough of this content or this creator doing this exact thing. It's not that fresh to me anymore. It might still be comforting to watch, but it, it doesn't have that same energy. And that's the tough thing about YouTube is we're expected to consistently every week or even once a month, whatever, consistently be coming out with new things that meet our audience's expectations. Yet there is no time off in terms of there's no satisfying series 
or season finale. There is no time to end and then wait and process and work on something else. It's just like a constant chug. There's not much like time off to just sit and take an extended time to think or write or grow or change as a person or a creator. No, no, no. You've got to just keep keep chugging every week and somehow make it interesting and make it different and make it better than before. An impossible task. And with that, every time I mention YouTuber struggles, I know other people have to go to work consistently. I very much understand that. I'm just trying to compare the creative process. Even like expecting a musician to have a hit song every week or month. Also, it's very possible to not be putting anything out, releasing anything, but still be working in the background. So I guess that's what I'm thinking about. Colin and Samira actually posted a video about YouTuber seasons and how that could kind of possibly help this creative process be a little bit smoother, easier. Would it actually work in terms of viewership and especially with the punishment of the algorithm if you don't post regularly? I don't know, but just a thought. Had to add the disclaimer that yes, full-time YouTubers are very privileged to be able to do this as a job, but there are also difficulties and obstacles in creating videos for a living. And with that, we reach the classic topic of YouTuber burnout. I know, we've heard enough about it. But as a creator, I can't get enough. I want to talk about this all the time. I also want to touch on, like, my problems with video essays, like, personally, as a creator, how I've been feeling, which I am planning on doing an entire video on, so I hope you're interested. Let me know. In short, I've been having a very tough time with my confidence as a person and a creator. Again, I feel like I have nothing in my head. I have nothing to offer. There's the, the sense of comparison to other people, the constant pressure of analytics and views, blah, blah, blah. I'm always very dismissive of my own uh, concerns or how I'm feeling, which is not healthy. But yeah, like when YouTubers are burnt out, yet we're still to some extent obligated to make videos, it sucks because obviously it sucks for the viewers because you can tell when creators are tired or when they're not feeling it, their heart's not in it anymore. But as a creator, if this is your job or any part of the income that you rely on, you've got to keep going. You've got to keep showing up. You've got to keep posting. So yeah, I've recently come to terms with the fact that I am indeed feeling burnt out. I think I was trying to deny it for a while. And it's funny because as I've noticed, that I have not been seeking out as much video essay content as usual. If that's not my thing as a viewer, if I'm feeling kind of meh about watching it, then I think maybe people also feel meh about watching my video essays. Like, if I were watching Tiffany Ferg's latest video, would I even want to click on it? Would I even be in the mood for that right now? And that sends me into a spiral because then I'm like, oh god. <laughs> Nobody's gonna watch my videos. My work is for nothing. Again, there's a lot more that I wanna get into in another video that's gonna be much more detailed in how I've been feeling, but I think it's important for me to um, try to find a way to connect again with YouTube and with myself and what I wanna do creatively and also with my audience because I have been feeling really, really disconnected for a while. Hence why I'm doing this video a little more casually I'm trying to force myself out of my comfort zone or out of my formula to see if that helps jog some life into me. I don't know. <laughs> but that brings me to the world is burnt out. You know, I don't think it's just creators feeling burnout. Um, viewers are also experiencing burnout, but just everyone in general, which is very normal. Like I've explained, I don't feel like I have very much brain power right now. I don't have very much capacity. I don't have very much desire to think deeply. I want escapism. I want pure mind numbing entertainment. I think it's really important to mention the impact of the pandemic, which we are still in. It's not over yet, yet we're in this weird phase of, you know, returning to normalcy in a lot of ways, yet things are not done. And also, very importantly, we haven't had time to process any of this pain and trauma that we've been going through for the last few years. Like, we're just expected to be like, well, let's move on, go back to normal, feel good again, get out and live our lives. We're all supposed to be putting on that facade of like, things are fine now. Cheers. I think there's also this component of like, because we've spent the last few years a lot more isolated inside on our phones, a lot of screen time. There's also a pressure to like get out there and live real life and like socialize with people again and touch grass, <laughs> which is great. I am trying to do that as well. I'm really trying to um, give my eyes a break at the very least, which as a creator is actually really scary. It's like a very selfish reaction to be like, oh my God, I think people 
people are watching our videos less. I think we're, we're getting less views on YouTube because, or maybe in part, in part because maybe people are out there living life a little bit more and maybe not sitting and waiting for the next upload as we were for the past few years, you know, which as a viewer, I understand. I love to see it. As a creator, I'm like, no, please <laughs> sit and refresh your homepage so that you can watch my video as soon as it's out. I know, very selfish, but I, I think it's hard as a creator to not be extremely invested in like the viewership habits of your audience. Back to my point of like feeling burnt out. I think that's a big part of all of this. Like YouTube doesn't feel like it used to because nothing, no type of entertainment can heal what's going on with me or with anyone. Does that make sense? I have to continuously keep reminding myself, it is okay to feel off. It is okay to feel, eh. it is okay to feel like I'm just surviving day by day because that's what we've been doing. We've been in a survival state for a long time and it's not gonna end anytime soon. And one of my biggest takeaways is that, again, especially under a capitalist system, we do not have the time to pause, breathe, reflect, process, grieve. I recently was busy trying to write a video. I had a deadline, so I was trying to focus, and there were many tragic events happening in the news, globally, in this country. And I had this horrible day where I needed to film, and I had to actively stop myself from keeping up with the news because I knew if I read that news, if I pay attention closely to what horrible things are happening, I won't be able to be happy on camera. I won't be able to perform. And it was such a sickening feeling to, to kind of have to actively turn off my humanity, turn off my awareness to what was going on because I had to focus on ultimately being productive, going to work essentially. And it is so fucked that we all have to do that. We all have to do that, you know? Like how many times in high school did I have to stop myself from crying for whatever reason because I had to go clock in at my job after school, you know? We all have to do that. We don't get to take days off because the world is fucked and it's really hard to focus on this stupid work we have to do. So yeah, I've been having a lot of moments thinking about that. How it really is all about remaining productive, remaining busy, focusing on work. You're not allowed to stop. We can't slow down, even though we can. <laughs> We're not allowed to. Even if you as an individual are fortunate enough to have some paid time off for mental health days or whatever dystopian shit that is. <laughs> Good to have, but you know, it's like, oh, you get one day to deal with that mental health of yours and otherwise you need to be back to work. Collectively, we all are not able to like slow down the whole world and be like, hey, let's, let's be real. We don't need to work on a lot of this shit. Most of this shit is bullshit. Certain things need to keep going so that we can all live, but like a lot of our work is bullshit, you know? I once saw a TikTok that kind of reflected this idea and I have referenced it so many times and I think about it a lot because it's been so profound to me and I can't remember the creator, I can't find it, but if I ever remember, I'll, I'll let you know. But essentially the creator was talking about how often our goal as people is like, I just want to be happy, but how it's not a healthy goal to assume that we should always be happy, that the standard state of a person should be happy because there's so many other things that we experience in life, so many other states, so many other emotions that constantly trying to get ourselves, oh, just get over it so that you can go back to being happy again, go back to being productive again. That's not good. We are not going to be happy all the time. We shouldn't set that expectation for ourselves and we need to give ourselves the space to not be happy. We need to give ourselves the space to process and go through negative emotions for a long period of time, often. Anyway, that could be a whole video in itself. And honestly, I'm interested. I think that would be something kind of fascinating to try to dive into. But anyway, yes, again, because we do not get that time or space to process all of the shit that we go through individually and collectively, it's not surprising at all that we are feeling burnt out and that our escapism into entertainment such as YouTube is not effective in um, healing those wounds. I get it. It makes sense. I'm laughing a bit while editing this because that was a pretty heavy section and there is like not a good transition from this to the next. It's abrupt. <laughs> so anyway, back to internet things. So my last thing, if I am feeling kind of meh 
not so inspired about YouTube, and if I am consuming a lot of TikTok, why don't I try to start making TikToks of my own? It would be a smart business move, you know? A lot of YouTubers, a lot of people on other platforms are using TikTok to build a new audience or bring their audience back to their main platform. Good question. Yes, I agree that, you know, to survive the harshness of the ever-changing internet, it is very important to adapt. That's the advice. <laughs> However, I, as you know, create very long form content and frankly, I would not know how to make myself have a concise point. I don't think I'm capable of that anymore. However, I will say that I really like and admire the way that on TikTok, again, especially when I'm watching other internet culture kind of content or history content, I like that some creators are able to share just a little tidbit, just like the, the inkling, <laughs> the beginning of an idea. Be like, hey, I've been thinking about this. It's not fully flushed out yet, but just wanted to share that and see what you guys think. I like that because I do have <sighs> dozens of those ideas and little tidbits floating around in my brain. And it's nice to think that I could make one quick point or ask one little question without feeling compelled to write an entire 25 minute video. Or even practically, you know, if I really wanted to, I could just edit little clips from my YouTube videos and put them on TikTok or just refilm, repurpose little tidbits. I don't know, tidbits, say it one more time. But aside from the actual content challenge, I will admit I am scared of the TikTok comments section. I have heard some things that people on TikTok for one reason or another are just kind of vicious. And though I am used to being subjected to the YouTube comment sections, um, I could just see myself like spiraling and reading way too many TikTok comments and not being able to stop myself from looking at those. And again, I think I'm in a slightly too delicate state currently with my self-esteem that it's probably not the best idea to put myself out there and be thrown onto random people's for you page so they can rip my stupid ideas to shreds. But lastly, I also just really enjoy actually using a platform purely as a user, as a viewer. It's a really nice change of pace to not have to worry about being a creator, not monetize it, not turn it into part of my job. So here we are at the end of the video. To reiterate, YouTube is not dead. I don't think it's really dying. I might be a bit tired and uh, fatigued as a viewer and a creator right now, but that doesn't mean that everyone is feeling that. I'm sure there are different pockets of YouTube and different creators that are thriving right now, as is always true. The rise and fall. <laughs> and ironically enough, as I was writing this and I was bopping around YouTube to get a sense of what's going on. Then suddenly I was tempted to binge watch a bunch of content. Then I was like, I had like four videos. I was like, oh, I wanna watch these right now. Hmm, funny, funny how that happens. Perhaps it was me trying to procrastinate actually doing work. I was like, no, 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 I'll watch, I'll watch videos now. I will consume content all day long. There's always a thousand more videos on my watch later and that, that is true, there's, there's no shortage of good content on YouTube. And with that being said, I really genuinely appreciate you right now choosing to have watched this video and making it to the end. That is very kind of you. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video and I would love to hear your thoughts on um, how are you feeling about YouTube as a viewer and or as a creator. Let me know what your favorite platform is currently and what kind of content you are seeking out. And thank you as always to my sweet, sweet patrons. If you want access to bonus content or just want to support the channel, that is much appreciated. Extra shouts out to my executive producer tier. Ula Face, Abby Hayden, Cassandra Toner, Eric Danielson, Freshly Laundered, Jaden C, Jackie King, Gemma Quack, Jill Hoffman, Joe Fernandez, Josh Woods, Julie Leva, Justin Landis, Casey Luck, Kristen Holloman, Christian Monge, Matthew Gray, Megan Collins, MegCat33, Nicole Louise, Online DBT Skills, Rebecca Goodson, Rob Sanders, Rohana Barden, Sarah Kemi, Stevie May, Tessa Thompson, Tom Walker, Treffa, and VivianOladon.com. Um, thank you all for being such sweeties. And once again, thank you to SeatGeek for sponsoring today's video. You can download the app, click the link in the description, and use my promo code Tiffany to get $20 off your first purchase. Thanks again, and stay tuned for future internet analysis videos. Okay, thanks, bye!